people around the country are using alternative and complementary approaches to their health care. And women are the biggest users of not only conventional medicine, but of complementary approaches. The Clayman Institute for Gender Research at Stanford University, creating a society where women and men flourish. Women want to partner with their doctors. They want to share what they're doing. Maybe this body work that I'm doing will preclude the, the need for some surgical procedure. How can they, they're really proactive in their health care. About 15 years ago, I founded the Richard and Hinder Rosenthal Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine at Columbia, which really provided the foundation for putting together a team across disciplines, because this is a really a multidisciplinary field, putting together phytochemists and cell biologists and molecular biologists, clinicians, physiologists, anthropologists, ethnobotanists to study this complex but fascinating field of botanical medicine. Every culture has had its herbal traditions. It's just that we kind of forgot about it on the surface for a long time. Whereas in Europe, in Asia, these things have been used for, for centuries. In China, Chinese medicine is, is there in hospitals alongside of the Western medicine. You walk in the front door, you go left for the Western medicine, you go right for the Chinese medicine. They provide herbal prescriptions and Western prescriptions. So in most of the world, these things have remained in the public use. One of the projects that I worked on while I was here is completing a book on botanical medicine. It's called Botanical Medicine from Bench to Bedside. The book is an attempt to provide researchers with models of how good research is done, how do you do quality phytochemistry, how do you do quality clinical trials, basically from basic science to clinical application and get good quality results because doctors today are faced with patients coming to them wanting to use these botanicals. They're using them already and they may not even tell their doctors. And doctors feel uncomfortable. They don't know whether these things are useful or not useful. So I think we really owe it to the public to do good quality research to provide the evidence base that doctors want to have before they will feel comfortable with their patients using these things or at least become conversant with the information that's out there so that they could help guide their patients to a better quality product, understand if there might be interactions, either positive or negative with the drugs that they're giving, and be uh, better partners with their patients. Right now, 40% or more of the public are using some aspect of complementary alternative medicine. In Europe, the, there has been a long history, more than 50 years of research in botanicals. They produce high quality, uh, pharmaceutical grade botanical products that are certified before they go on the market so the public can rely on the quality of the herbs. Doctors learn about botanicals in medical school so that they're knowledgeable of what patients are using. In this country botanicals are a multi-billion dollar business. It really behooves us to make sure that those products that people are using are of high quality. Half of the products on the shelves either have the wrong plant in them, don't have anything in them, and there's no good way today for the public to know which are the good quality products and which aren't, unless you begin to know which companies are reliable. And that will happen. Consumers will become aware of the companies that make reliable, good quality products. But right now, it's a big problem. The FDA has the power to regulate the quality of these products. They don't have the person power to enforce it particularly in Europe and also Japan, there's been research done. There's been high quality herbs produced and research done to try to understand better mechanisms of action, who do they work for, and what doses. And so this research base exists in other parts of the world. And it's available for people here to find those. They're not always in our main Medline database, but they're in other databases around the world that people are now beginning to access and see there actually is quite a significant body of research. Let's build on that body of research.